Welcome back to another Varnberg Implement product informational series video. And today we're here with another Massey Ferguson premium cab compact utility tractor. Today it's the Massey Ferguson 2850M. We have done a previous video on this, but the thing that we're going to talk about today is the one with the power shuttle transmission. We're going to jump out here, we're going to do our normal walk around and show you the features, show you the functions of the Massey Ferguson tractor walk around. Then we'll jump in the cab, show you the controls and how to operate, and then we're going to take you for a ride to show you how to own and operate your new Massey Ferguson tractor. The Massey Ferguson 2850M, one of the nice features is these heavy metal hoods but you have the quick hood that pops up. Pops up out of the way. Make it easy to get into all your daily maintenance. Got your battery in front, your air cleaner, your coolant overflow tank. Got all your condensers and stuff with the clean out screen on the radiator and the coolers. This features the Izeki four cylinder 2.43 liter diesel engine. Here's your engine oil check on this side. We're going to slip around to the other side here real quick. This is a 48.8 gross engine horsepower tractor. Got your engine oil filter right here. Got your oil fill. You have your fuel filter underneath this hood. This features a premium Izeki engine. It does have a diesel particulate filter back there. This is a particulate filter based on actual soot load, not a timed sequence. You got your air conditioning uh, receiver dryer right here, air cleaner, dual element air cleaner. Metal hood sl slips down here. We're going to explain a lot more about that diesel particulate filter function and how it operates when we get inside the cab in the operation and control segment of it. But it's nothing to be worried about. You got uh, 10 by 16 five front tires. You've got a bevel gear pinion front axle. You can see how much room you got under there. The bevel gear pinion design allows it to pivot on this point right here down that shaft and then this is your planetary final drive. Gives you super tight turning radiuses and a lot of ground clearance. Um, there is a quick detach loader. This is the FL2814 loader. Comes standard with skid steer quick attach. One of the things that just came up was a question about buckets. These feature a tapered bucket. If you look at this edge right here, it's wider at this point than back there, so it helps the load flow out of the machine, out of your bucket when it makes it easier to dump. Bucket gauge, gauge rod is standard equipment. Quick detach. Pull these two pins with the D-clip right here. Pull those out lower your loader stand and it's ready to come off the tractor. One of the most discussed features that is often overlooked is the ground level fueling. Basically, right there's my foot, about three foot off the ground. That's all you got to raise it. You're not going to pour all over the top of your hood or the back of your tractor. Metal fenders. This features the R4 tire. This is a 14924 rear. Uh, there is some available options. There's a 17 and a half. It's a little wider tire. This one fits real nice with the bucket up there. If you look at that bucket edge to cut out your tracks. In the cab version, one set of remotes will be standard equipment. These have 12.6 gallon per minute flow at the remote or the loader. It's got a lot of fast hydraulics your oil fill for the hydraulic transmission and then you have a sight glass right there for your level and you want bucket down three point down 
in operating position when you check that on a flat level surface. Got telescopic three point link ends. You can pull those out. Three point lifting capacity, not at the ball end, but basically two foot back here from the ball from the end is 3086 pounds. So you got a lot of lifting capacity. PTO is 540 PTO and the horsepower at the PTO shaft is 38.1 PTO horsepower. One thing a power shuttle transmission is going to give you is a lot more horsepower at the PTO than a hydrostat. It doesn't rob as much horsepower as a hydrostat transmission. You got your windshield washer for your front and rear wiper and yes it does have a rear wiper. All these windows open. Toolbox back here. Uh, top link is standard equipment. We have it inside so it doesn't disappear. You got the standard cab with the halogen lights, the turn signal hazard lights, dual mirrors, dual doors to get in from either side of the cab. Listen how quiet that Izeki power engine is. We're going to talk a little bit about loader lifting capacity. Breakout force is to the point where this bucket leaves the ground. And there's two places they measure bucket ratings. At the pivot pin, which is going to be where your arm comes down. This pin here, or 19 and a half inches forward, which is going to be your more front edge of your bucket. Breakout force is 3,910 pounds at the pivot pin, 2,960 pounds at the front edge of the bucket. Next, we're going to show you the next measurement. We're going to raise the loader here. You notice we can. What they have is a six foot measurement. It's 59 inches at the pivot pin, right here again is 3,010 pounds. At the front edge of the bucket, we're looking at 2,420 pounds of lift. That is a comparable measurement. Now the last loader lifting value is at full lift height. The last loader lifting height measurement is at full maximum lift height. That's the one you normally see published in the magazine, but you still have the pivot pin and the front edge of the bucket. At the pivot pin, right up there, is 2,570 pounds with 1,880 on the front edge of the bucket. So we've got 111 inch lift height. Those are your loader lifting capacities. As the higher the loader lifts, the more force it takes to lift that load. So maximum lift height, when you're comparing loaders, it's very tough. You've got to measure lifting height and specs at the same time. You've got the nice new styling, the aggressive styling, four lights in the front on each side there. Got your grill guard and you got your two cab lights up here and turn signals and the double door cab and now we're going to jump inside and explain controls and how to operate this thing so you can take it home today and make one yours one of the features of the standard cab with the with the grammar mechanical seat is the adjustable positions if you pull up on the seat base you can start at the low position come up one position two positions or all the way back so you got down position one position two you got three positions that you can run the seat now you can see out of that great visibility of this vision cap uh, you have a pull down sunshade up here you've got air vents two three on that side and you've got another three on this side both the side windows open, the back window opens, you got a cell phone holder right there. 
put your cell phone back here and keep it with a charging port right down there. A 12 volt power port, cup holder, rear remote valve. This controls the rear remote and back. This is your three point raise and lower with an upper and lower stop to set like depth stop. Like if you're gonna run a mower, you can take the three point hitch down right there. Thumb throttle, joystick with float position. Got left and right, up, down, and float. And quick delt. You can see it all right there on the decal on the side. You do have a loader lock, which is right down here on the side. This decal, lock the joystick, and nothing can happen to the loader while you're using it. Great for when you're not using the loader. Here's the other window. Speakers, your, your inner air filter, your cab air filter, this is gonna be your recirculation. You have a three position light on when the door opens or off position. This is your heating air conditioning system. In outside air, inside air, heat, cool, fan positions, and air conditioning when you push the button in. Your front wiper, rear wiper, front and rear work lights. This red light works when you have the front lights on with the control here. Foot throttle is right down there. Dual brakes that you can separate to do right and left braking. This is your parking brake. So you push down and lock your brake. Tap it to release it. Tilt steering. You have your clutch on this side. We're gonna just start it up here. Gonna let it equalize. There's your preheat position. Now it's ready to go. Have your dash symbols. Now one thing, when you see that symbol right there is gonna come on yellow. That is like the air blowing. That is going to be your start of your diesel particulate filter. And if you look right over here in the corner of the cab, you have a decal. Flashing, that means it's ready to do a regeneration. Uh, when it starts flashing, what you'll need to do is raise your engine RPMs with your hand throttle. And you'll take it right up there to that orange band. And you'll continue to use it. While you're using it, that light will go solid. And when it goes out, that means the regeneration process is done. You can keep using it. Now there are a couple of functions. If you're in an area that has uh, poor ventilation, like inside a barn or arena, you can push and hold this button for five seconds. And you're inhibit the regeneration process light will illuminate. Push and hold it another five seconds and it will go back to normal mode where it can do the regeneration. You don't want to do this very too many times because then you get into higher levels of this. And the higher the level it is, the more you sacrifice on usability. This is where you can do a park regeneration. That's where you're going to have to stop the tractor if you inhibit the regeneration too many times. And if you keep in doing it too many times, then it requires a dealer uh, regeneration. It does have a horn. have hazard lights. This is your dash switch. You can go through miles per hour. You can do your PTO on and off. You turn your PTO, this is one cool feature, is it's got soft start. So we push it down and turn it a third of the turn. And we need to be in gear for the PTO to start operating. There where you can see the 220. So we raise the RPMs 
it'll increase the PTO speed. To shut the PTO off, just tap that button and it's done. This is a graduated startup, or with the light off, it is a direct engagement of the PTO. On this side, we got our four gears, which these four are synchronized, so all you have to do is use the clutch to shift those on the go. Or you have the three ranges, high, medium, and low range. This is your PTO engaged lever for the rear PTO. Mid PTO is an available option if you got a front snow blower or a rotary broom. And this is your four-wheel drive engagement right here. Push down to engage, pull up to disengage. That's pretty much everything inside the cab. Dealer installed option is a radio. We can do regular radio or Bluetooth. Uh, both are available through the Agco Parts Accessory System. Then we can install here for you at Varnberg Implement. Now, there's your loader raise. Just pull back. You can go, you can do two functions at once. See, we're raising and dumping the bucket at the same time. You can do the same thing coming down. So you got quick, you can put it in float and it'll follow the ground contours. You can adjust the edge of the bucket there. Raise it up. I'll hit the float one more time for you. Float position just allows it to fall to the ground position. The faster you run the hydraulics, the faster the loader will run. You got that 12.6 gallons per minute working for you. I always like to tell people is make sure that that bucket is on. Give it a couple taps like that to make sure they're engaged. There's two little silver pins right down there at the bottom on the inside of the arm that have to be engaged or that bucket can come off and can crash into your tractor and right down the arms into you. So that's one thing you want to be aware of is um, when you're operating a loader, it may have people around that uh, you want to make sure that that skid steer quick attaches uh, on and available. We've got our little handy dandy sound meter out here. We're 67, 68 decibel reading at the steering wheel here. Idle speed, we're 50, low 50s, 52, 53. Very quiet cab. back here in the corner you're down in the 40s so let's take it for a drive to operate the power transmit shuttle transmission you got first second third and fourth in your traditional H pattern you'll need to use the clutch as we're doing here so we're going to just go to the low range, the snail, and then once you're in gear, you have a forward reverse. So we're going to go forward here. If you want to go reverse speed, no clutch. You see the clutch pedal right down there. There's no clutching. You can come to neutral before you go back to forward. You can clutch with it. but you don't have to. That is the cool part of the power shuttle, is it is a hydraulic forward reverse shuttle. Now if you want to change speeds, we're in fourth there, so what we're going to do is we're going to come to a stop, 
push the clutch in, come back to mid-range, we'll come over here to second. Now you want to change speeds on the go, just push the clutch and go. Want to go reverse? Forward and reverse there. Got super tight steering here. See that bevel gear pinion axle working for you. Got a lot of great visibility out of the front of these tractors. Shift to four. You can feel the left brake and the right brake. Or you can tap both of them at the same time, but it won't stop the tractor. You've got to put it out of gear. That's the difference of a power shuttle is pushing the brakes does not stop the tractor like in a hydrostat. Your shuttle lever or your clutch are going to be what does your braking. You got a foot throttle down there. So raise and lower. If you want to engage the four-wheel drive, we push it down. And you can feel it when you start trying to do turns, that axle kind of pulling and pulling you around. Feel it. Pulling the tractor. You do have your directional indicator down there. Now we're going to stop and go to high range. We put it in first and now you're driving your Massey Ferguson. You want to go to another speed, push your clutch in, go to second. We're out here to our new addition. We got a new loading dock here. We got the 1840M setting up on there today. Uh, we've got a, we're doing a little uh, change in landscape and scenery around here, uh, making it easier to get equipment in and out, uh, adding some additional room. We've got more places to park used machinery when it comes in, new machinery. Uh, things are changing at Varnberg Implement. We're expanding to make it easier to do business with us. And uh, take them for a test drive. You can actually go around the old car wash. Old car wash is up. Uh, car wash is out of commission, but we are using it for storage. But uh, now you can drive around the backside. We took all the grass out here. We've got a load of rock. We're still in the phases of getting this thing into shape. Um, as time allows us. So, if you're in Higginsville, Missouri, come see our changes, our expansion. Now, right there was a perfect example. We're on hard surface, and you don't want to be using the four-wheel drive was trying to jump too hard because it. surface you, where it doesn't have slip your front wheels are turning faster than your rear wheels it doesn't hurt it for a little short-term use but the best thing to do is if you're on hard surface asphalt concrete that type of surface where the tractor can't slip is to take it out of four-wheel drive uh, you want to change speeds we'll go all the way up to four speed here And we have miles per hour there, so you can see how fast we're going. Got things a little rough out there still because we ain't got her smoothed down. But you want to downshift? You can downshift and uh, do that with the by clutching it. So I hope that helped you learn a lot more about how to own and operate, got your dual mirrors, 
see people out there, see them on both sides of the tractor. There's a lot of things when you're shopping for a tractor that are little things that you often get overlooked. Um, front and rear wipers. Your tapered bucket. Uh, just some of the features, comforts, and controls. Dual mirrors, dual doors. Some of these companies don't offer all that stuff. And that's why Massey Ferguson offers a premium product to give you more for your hard-earned dollars so you can enjoy more of your hard-earned dollars with a Massey Ferguson. If you're looking for a 50 horsepower tractor, come check out this 2850M from Massey Ferguson. I hope that helped you learn about more about the power shuttle transmission available in the 2800M series. The 2850, the 55, and the 2860 are available with power shuttle versions. Uh, cab, no cab are, are available options. And uh, got a lot of, lot of super features. Come visit your local Massey Ferguson dealer. Take them for a drive. We're still in the period of uh, inventory levels that are tight right now. So the smartest way to buy is to pre-book your order through your local dealer. Go in, sign a retail order, book your tractor, lock in the price, lock in the programs. If you're in West Central Missouri, come visit us here at Varnberg Implement in Higginsville, Missouri, right here on Fairground Avenue and Missouri 13 right out there at the first stoplight. We're just four miles north of Interstate 70 and Missouri 13 Highway, just 35 miles from the home of the Kansas City Royals and Kansas City Chiefs and 49 miles from the Kansas line. So we're your West Central Missouri Massey Ferguson dealer. We've only been selling tractors here for three generations and 70 years, celebrating our 70th year of serving the farmers of West Central Missouri in 2022. We got a few tractors, we got some implements, tillers, mowers. We've got a lot of stuff ordered and coming in for you have a little bit of pre-owned left so if you're looking for a tractor it's time to get started now whether it be today's use or this fall if you're needing a tractor in 2022 let's get started now get you booked up and if the 2850m is the perfect tractor for you we've got one in stock ready pre-delivery inspections already been done it's ready to load up on your trailer or we can deliver to you if you're within the 60 mile radius of Higginsville, Missouri where we service and sell to our customers. Thank you for visiting another Varnberg Implement video and I hope you learn more about the 2850M from Massey Ferguson.